On March 16, 1897, in the newly incorporated city of Long Beach, formerly known as Wilmore, a group of citizens realized that the increasing number of properties lost by fire required the formation of a volunteer fire department. So on this date, 28 charter members signed up as volunteer firefighters and elected Brewster C. Kenyon as captain. Brewster Kenyon resigned in the spring of 1898 to accept a commission in the U.S. Army for the Spanish-American War. Several other members also resigned to enter the armed services, which caused this group to disband in favor of the war. On December 2, 1901, two small hose carts were purchased by the city trustees. These carts were equipped with 500 feet of hose each. 35 fire hydrants and one large bell were also purchased. This would become the nucleus of the Long Beach Fire Department. Prior to 1902, every able-bodied man or youth was a firefighter in time of need, whenever there was a blaze of any consequence. From 1900 to 1907, city leadership recognized that a more permanent firefighting organization was necessary. So on May 27, 1902, the Board of Trustees called a citizen meeting at City Hall and gave the go-ahead to organize the first fire department since Long Beach had become a city. Under this reorganizational plan, J. E. Shrewsbury was eventually elected chief. All apparatus at that time were hand-drawn and housed in the building at the rear of City Hall. The large bell was placed on a tower near the fire station. When a fire occurred, this bell would be told to call out the volunteers. On January 6, 1905, a midnight blaze destroyed the Long Beach Pavilion. The city suffered a $15,000 loss and three firefighters were injured. The fire so aroused the populace that a $30,000 bond was passed to build a central fire station. It was also to be used to purchase fire alarm boxes, equipment, a steam fire engine, a hose wagon, and a hook and ladder truck. Six young horses were also purchased from a nearby ranch and trained by the firefighters. Tom and Jerry, a beautiful pair of dapple grays, pulled the engine. King and Prince, coal black steeds, were on the hose wagon, and Major and Colonel, the bays, pulled the ladder truck. But the smartest one of all was Barney. Barney was raised as a colt at Station One and was a swing horse for the other six. Barney knew all the rules for each rig. At the sound of the fire bell, an electric switch caused the chain in front of each stall to drop to the floor. The horses went immediately to their places by their rigs and stood perfectly still under the harness, which was suspended a few feet above them on a short pulley. The firefighters lowered the harness onto the horse and with one movement snapped the collar in place. In 1906, the central station was built at 210 West 3rd Street. The station was placed into service with Chief J. Shrewsbury and Assistant Chief G. Craw, together with a few hired men to be trained as firefighters. The large bell that had been in the tower at the rear of City Hall was placed high in the host tower of the new station and was connected to the new alarm system. The first fire alarm received over the new box system came from box number 23, which was located at 3rd Street and Olive Avenue. In 1907, the fire department borrowed an automobile as a trial. It was so successful that the Ramblers were secured. Long Beach had the distinction of operating the first piece of motorized fire equipment on the Pacific Coast, preceding Los Angeles Fire Department by three months. In 1908, as the population increased to 23,000, the fire department, together with the police department, were placed under civil service rules. In 1911, the first motor-driven pumper was purchased, as well as a Seagrave air-cooled tractor to motorize the ladder truck. From 1912 to 1913, as the city population grew to over 30,000, a Seagrave hose wagon was purchased to pull the steamer. The purchase of the hose wagon marked the departure of the horses from the department. Tragically, on May 2, 1916, while answering a false alarm, Chief J. Shrewsbury and Mr. C. Shaw superintendent of the water department riding together in the Chief's Mitchell, collided with Assistant Chief Craw and his driver, G. Wright, in the Oldsmobile Chemical at Broadway and American Avenue. Chief J. Shrewsbury was killed instantly and the other occupants were severely injured. By 1918, the city had grown by leaps and bounds to a population of 53,000. 
Mr. H. Ellis, a member of the department who had previous experience on the Philadelphia Fire Department, was appointed Deputy Marshal of the newly formed Fire Prevention Bureau. The discovery of oil on Signal Hill on June 23, 1921, caused a terrific growth in the oil industry and large increase in the population of the city. The population grew from 55,000 in 1920 to 75,000. The disregard oil operators had for fire safety led to a continuous series of oil fires, which kept the department busy for years. One fire, which lasted for three days, involved 11 derricks. The lack of water due to the small size of the water mains and infrequent hydrants made this fire difficult to handle. Through the efforts of the Fire Prevention Bureau, this type of fire became less frequent with each succeeding year. On April 6, 1924, Assistant Chief H. Ellis was killed in a traffic accident while responding to an alarm. His death was the second member of the department to be killed in the line of duty. In 1930, the first fire prevention code for the city was adopted and a fire college, building, and training tower were erected at 14th Street and Peterson Avenue. On March 10, 1933, the Long Beach earthquake occurred. The initial shock of 6.3 magnitude was recorded at 5.54 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and was estimated to have continued for about 11 seconds. The epicenter was located beneath the Pacific Ocean just a few miles offshore from Newport Beach. The principal shock was followed by 34 aftershocks, some severe and some mild. At headquarters, most of the firefighters were upstairs, and at the time of the first shock, they scrambled to get out of the building. In the chaos, firefighter P. Forker stepped out of a front window onto a small balcony, just as the face of the upper floor crashed, carrying him to his death. Other members slid down the brass poles in the station and dove under the heavy apparatus for protection. Lieutenant A. Stevens, upon reaching the main floor, dashed outside in time to be buried by falling bricks and heavy cornice stones. He and Firefighter Forker were soon dug out of the debris and sent to the hospital where they both died from their injuries. Stations 1, 5, 7, and 9 were demolished and the others badly shaken, but still tenable. As a result of the damage from the quake, two large circus tents were procured one to house Station 1 on a vacant lot at 3rd Street between Pacific and Cedar Avenues, and the other tent housed Station 9 on its original site after the demolished station debris was removed. On May 8, 1942, the first fireboat, the Charles S. Wyndham, was placed into service. This boat was financed by the Harbor Department and was constructed by Wilmington Boatworks. Throughout 1943, many blackouts occurred and several other preparatory alerts were received that required the calling of members back to duty. Approximately 20% of the department members entered the armed forces, thereby requiring women to participate in the fire service for the first time. Mrs. K. Brooks was assigned to the Fire Prevention Bureau. By the end of the war in 1945, 67 men from the department had entered the armed forces with only one serious casualty. Fire Captain Dominic DeMarzo was killed in action aboard an aircraft carrier during an active naval engagement. On May 22, 1958, a fire broke out at the Hancock Oil Refinery in Signal Hill. Los Angeles County, as well as Long Beach, sent firefighters and equipment to assist the Signal Hill Fire Department. This fire sent large amounts of smoke into the sky, which could be seen for many miles. By the time the fire was out, the fire department had used 48,000 feet of hose and pumped 14 million gallons of water. The fire loss for this fire came to $8 million. In 1961, when the U.S. Air Force abandoned its facility at the Long Beach Airport, a much greater responsibility was placed on the city. To meet this added demand, a new Yankee crash truck was purchased and placed at Station 16 in the Long Beach Airport. On February 10, 1964, a new training tower and fire college complex were placed into service adjacent to Station 17 and is still in use today. In 1972, the Long Beach Fire Department had its first paramedic class of 15 firefighters graduate and continues to operate a world-class system of EMS with paramedics providing advanced life support. On December 1st, 1980, one of the worst pipeline rupture fires occurred within the city of Long Beach at 28th Street and Gale Avenue. 
Chief Robert Leslie grants Herb Bramley permission to temporarily store his fire engine in Old Station 10. The Long Beach Fire Department Museum is born. In 1986, Kathy Bradford, a two-time Olympic sprint canoeer and eight-time national champion, became the first female firefighter for the city of Long Beach. Kathy also became the first female firefighter to promote to fire captain. In April of 1992, the fire department is called into action to assist our law enforcement partners with widespread chaos that erupted into civil unrest. Known as the 1992 Los Angeles riots, this event impacted our city significantly. Throughout the weeks, widespread looting, assault, and arson took place. Multiple buildings were burned to the ground. This became a significant turning point for our agency as we were forced to address issues relating to firefighter safety on emergency incidents. In 1994, Long Beach Fire acquires the lifeguards and creates the Division of Marine Safety Lifeguard Division. In 1997, the Long Beach Fire Department celebrates 100 years of service. As the Long Beach Fire Department moves into the 21st century, the city has seen significant growth. As of the year 2000, under the leadership of Fire Chief Skip Beck, the total residents served has climbed to over 462,000 and includes the residents in the city of Signal Hill. 502 firefighters protect over 57 square miles and respond to over 51,000 calls for service with an operating budget of over 57 million. September 11th, 2001 was a major wake-up call for the nation and the Long Beach Fire Department. With the deaths of thousands of people, including 343 New York City firefighters, the city of Long Beach and our department mourned with the nation as we grieved this horrific event and prepared ourselves for the war on terrorism. As the complexity of the fire service expands, the Long Beach Fire Department establishes a regional urban search and rescue task force and develops a regional hazardous materials team in the port of Long Beach. The vulnerability of our city with potential acts of terrorism sees the development of various resources to keep our city safe especially considering major events such as the Grand Prix, the Marathon, and other highly visible special events that occur monthly throughout the city. Long Beach firefighters are sent on numerous strike teams throughout the state as we see the worst wildland fire seasons on record ravage the state year after year. In 2006, the fire department responded to one of the largest apartment fires in the history of the department. The fire at Paradise Gardens Apartments left two people dead and 18 others injured. In 2015, the city of Long Beach experienced a massive power outage in the downtown area of the city. Thousands of residents were left without power for multiple days during the peak of the summer heat in July. Firefighters, along with Long Beach CERT members, other city departments, and volunteers came together and established mass care, shelter, and feeding for those that were impacted and started to lay the groundwork for the development of a citywide incident management team. In 2016, the fire department received the first of two new fireboats that are among the most technically advanced waterborne firefighting resources in the world. The second boat, named Protector, is dedicated to Long Beach Fire Captain and Navy Cross recipient, Lieutenant Dominic DeMarzo, who was killed on the USS Intrepid on November 25, 1941. In 2018, tragedy strikes the fire department. Fire Captain David Rosa was shot and killed while investigating reports of an explosion in a senior living apartment building. Captain Rosa's death was a major loss for the city and the department, and to this day is an event that is memorialized as part of the annual police and fire memorial that occurs every year in May. On the one year anniversary of his death, the Long Beach Fire Training Center was renamed the Long Beach Fire Department Captain David Rosa Regional Training Center in his honor. In 2020, the world goes on lockdown with the arrival of COVID-19. The pandemic activates the city's incident management team and the Joint Information Center. The Emergency Operations Center is activated as the fire department provides significant manpower and resources in support of the citywide response. For over two years, the pandemic cripples the nation and our city. However, the Long Beach Fire Department continues to meet the demands placed on them despite the uncertainty and the risks associated with this historical international event. As we come to 2022, the state of our fire department looks good. We look to the future with optimism. As we celebrate 125 years of service to the city of Long Beach, we realize that there is a significant amount of work that lies ahead. 
We will rise to the challenge as we continue to develop a workforce that is reflective of the community we serve. We will embrace the future while remembering our past. We will celebrate our successes and learn from our failures. We will continue to evolve and adjust to the shifting landscape that creates the unique, diverse, and modern city that we serve.